In 2018, Intel introduced the Thermal Velocity Boost technology along with the Intel Core i9-8950HK mobile flagship processor. Thermal Velocity Boost opportunistically increases the clock frequency above the Turbo Boost 2.0 frequency based on how much the processor is operating below its maximum temperature. The frequency gain and duration is dependent on the workload, the capabilities of the processor and the processor cooling solution. For processors that have Intel Thermal Velocity Boost enabled, the maximum core frequency is achieved while the processor is at a pre-specified temperature or lower. For the 10900K, the pre-specified temperature is 70 degrees centigrade, while for mobile chips, it's usually more around 50 degrees centigrade. Another TVB feature that many people tend to overlook is the voltage guard band depending on core temperature. Traditionally, the voltage requested by the processor is based on the worst case temperature scenario of 100 degrees centigrade. However, a well-cooled processor requires less voltage to run the same frequency. When thermal velocity boost is enabled, the processor will automatically reduce the operating voltage if the CPU temperature is below 100 degrees centigrade. This is, of course, very helpful in scenarios where the cooling is great but still limited, like for example in high-performance gaming notebooks. The lower temperature will not only result in lower voltage, but in turn, the lower voltage will reduce the temperature. This cycle will assist the CPU to get into the thermal velocity boost range and create more opportunities for higher boost frequencies. With the introduction of Intel cryocooling technology, Intel opened up the thermal velocity boost configuration to motherboard vendors. Obviously, thermal velocity boost is exploiting the additional overclocking headroom because of the lower temperatures thanks to cryocooling. You can use either XTU or, on the motherboards that support it, configure thermal velocity boost from the BIOS. The easiest way to understand the thermal velocity boost configuration is by going from the top ratio to the bottom ratio. After configuring the settings, save and exit, then go back into the BIOS and back into the TVB submenu. Now you will see a full table of the configuration. The first column is to describe the amount of active cores going from 1 to 10 with the 10900K. The second column describes the maximum possible ratio for a particular amount of active cores. In our configuration, the maximum ratio for one core active is 60 and the maximum ratio for 10 cores active is 52. Since we keep a fixed base clock frequency of 100 MHz, this results in 6 GHz and 5.2 GHz. The third column describes the first temperature offset point. When the CPU exceeds this temperature, it will decrease the ratio of the CPU. In my configuration, when the CPU temperature exceeds 10 degrees and 4 cores are active, then the CPU will decrease the ratio. Similarly, when the temperature exceeds 50 degrees and 10 cores are active, the CPU will also decrease the frequency. The fourth column describes the ratio offset for the temperature configured in the third column. So, when the CPU temperature exceeds 10 degrees and 4 cores are active, the ratio will decrease by 4. 6 minus 4 is 56. So the CPU will run the 4 cores at 5.6 GHz. The fifth column is an additional temperature offset point. The function is the same like the first temperature offset, but in this case the ratio cannot be configured and is always set to decrease one additional step. So, in my case, the CPU frequency for two active cores will be 6 GHz. If the temperature is higher than 10 degrees centigrade, then the frequency will drop to 5.7 GHz. If the temperature exceeds 51 degrees centigrade, then it will further drop one ratio to, to 5.6 GHz. 